In this forecast, we're going to look at the shapes of simple molecules. So what you have, what your objective for this forecast is that you have to be able to use what's called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VESPA for short, to determine the shape of simple molecules and polyatomic ions. So what is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory? Basically it states that the structure around any given atom is determined by that atom minimizing the repulsions between the electron pairs. What that really means is that you're typically going to have pairs of electrons, either in bonds or in lone pairs. We can think of sometimes it's going to be groups of electrons, and all these electrons are negative, so they repel each other. So they want to get as far away from each other as possible. And so as they move away from each other, they're going to end up taking up a particular shape. So you can use this information to predict the shape that simple molecules will form. There are several steps in identifying the shape of a molecule. The first one is that you actually have to draw a Lewis diagram of your molecule. The next is you want to find the central atom, the atom that's in the middle of your molecule, and you want to count what we're going to call electron domains. And these are regions or areas where there are groups of atoms. They can be bonding atoms or they can be lone pairs. So a single bond would be considered one domain. A double bond would also be considered one domain. A triple bond would be one domain. And a lone pair would be one domain. So you need to count how many of those there are around the central atom. Step three, the, num the number of these domains will then determine what we're going to call the basic shape of the molecule. Then lastly, you want to work out the actual shape of the molecule. To do that, you've got to look at the central atom and see if there are any lone pairs. And if there are lone pairs, then the shape, the actual shape of the molecule will be different from its basic shape. Okay, let's look at some examples. These are the basic shapes that molecules can take up based on the number of domains around the central atom. In this first one, let's assume that this is a central atom. Um, there is only one domain, and so that's going to be linear. In this case, in this central atom, there are two domains or two regions around the central atom. So the furthest that those two regions can get away from each other is 180 degrees, so that's going to create a linear molecule. In this image, you have three domains or three regions of negative charge around that central atom. And the furthest that three regions can get away from each other is 120 degrees. So this molecule will take on what's called a trigonal planar shape. Trigonal meaning three, planar meaning flat. And lastly, in this unit, we're going to look at atoms, the central atom that has four domains around it. And in this case, it's going to take what's called a tetrahedral shape. Tetra meaning four. And that angle is going to be 109.5 degrees. Now the actual shape of a molecule may be different than its basic shape. And I want to show you a couple of examples. These are the basic shapes that we've shown at the top. But sometimes you can have what's called a lone pair around a central atom. So let's look at this one right here in the middle. You can see there are three domains around the central atom, so you would think that it, that basically is a trigonal planar shape. But one of those domains is taken up by lone pairs. Remember, lone pairs are negative. They're going to repel the electrons in these bonds. These are bonding pair electrons in here, and they're going to everyone's going to they're all going to repel each other. So they're going to try and get as far away from each other as possible. Um, but because one area of one domain is a lone pair the actual shape of the molecule is going to look like this. So it's going to be a bent molecule molecule rather than a trigonal planar. Okay, let's look at one more example on this page. Let's look at this molecule over here. You can see it has four domains. One of the domains is a lone pair. So the actual shape of the molecule is going to look like this. And that happens to be what we call a trigonal pyramidal shape. So just be aware that if you have lone pairs around the central atom, that's going to change the actual shape of the molecule. You're going to have these new shapes which we've just talked about, which is bent and trigonal pyramidal. 
let's look at an example. So here's methane. You can see that carbon is a central atom and it has one, two, three, four domains around the central atom. So it's going to take on a tetrahedral shape. And none of those domains are lumpy, so the molecule itself will actually also be a tetrahedral as you can see here. And the angle between the bonds is going to be exactly 109.5 degrees. Next, let's look at ammonia in H3. Here's its Lewis diagram up here. It also has one, two, three, four domains around the central atom, which is sort of a, based on a tetrahedral shape down here. But the thing to note, of course, is that one of those domains consists of lone pairs. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that its actual shape, because of the lone pairs, is going to be not tetrahedral, but trigonal pyramidal. So it's a triangle, but it's actually a pyramid. So the shape is trigonal pyramidal. And the angle, it's actually going to be a little bit less than 109.5 because these two lone pairs are a lot closer to the central atom than the pairs of electrons that are on the bonds. The reason being that these bonding electrons are being pulled by both atoms, whereas up here, there is no atom up here pulling on the lone pair, so they're slightly closer to the central atom. So that means that it's going to decrease the angle between the bonds. Okay, let's look at formaldehyde, CH2O. Here is its Lewis diagram at the top. You can see that carbon is the central atom. And there are one, two, three domains. This double bond, it's got four electrons in it, but we can we treat, consider this as one domain, or one cluster of negative charge. So they're all going to try and repel each other. So normally, um, this molecule would take on a trigonal planar shape, which is what it's going to do. Now, if these were, bonds were all the same, if they were all single bonds, then this angle would indeed be 120 degrees. But in this domain, because it's a double bond, you've got four electrons in here, as opposed to here and here, where you just have your two electrons. So there's a lot more negative charge concentrated in here, and this bond is actually shorter. So but once again, because these, are, these electrons are a little bit closer to the central atom, they're going to push these electrons further away, so that's going to change the angle. So the angle up here will be slightly greater than 120 degrees and the angle down here will be a little less than 120 degrees on this particular molecule. Another good example is carbon dioxide. Up here is its Lewis diagram and you can see that there is a double bond here and a double bond here. So carbon has only two domains around its central atom and so they will get as far away from each other as possible and that happens to be 180 degrees. So carbon dioxide will take up a linear shape. So let's just finish to summarize again. Here is methane, CH4. You can see that it has one, two, three, four domains around the central atom. That basically creates this tetrahedral shape. All of them are bonding pairs, so the molecule itself has also has a tetrahedral shape. Let's compare that to ammonia. It also has four domains, one, two, three, four, which leads us to this basic tetrahedral shape. But one of the domains consists of lone pairs. So the actual shape of the molecule is going to be a trigonal pyramid. And lastly, let's look at water. It also has one, two, three, four domains around the central atom, so the basic shape is a tetrahedral, but two of those domains are lone pairs. So the actual shape of the molecule will be bent. 
So I hope this makes sense to you. Um, please go back and review and try your hand at some problems. Good luck.